Well, good morning, Faith Bible Church. It's good to see everybody today. Weather's warming up, might be a little rainy, but I'm thankful that we are out of the snow season, I think. So it's good to see everybody. Revelation chapter 5, verse 13 says, And every creature which is under heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all them that are in them, heard I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. I'm so thankful this morning to gather with you all to be able to worship our King and our Savior. Would you stand with me? Grab your songbook. We're going to turn to number 77. Oh, worship the King. Number 77.
Bible Church. It's good to see everybody this morning. If we could find our seats, we are going to continue on with our service. So good to see everybody here. Tom has been waiting to say a meet and greet, and I have been waiting to give the thumbs up for so long. That's finally good. So, all right. Good to see everybody here. I just have a few announcements. Uh, but first, I want to welcome you all. I want to welcome our visitors. Uh, if this is your first time with us, thank you for being here this morning. We are glad you are here. Uh, there is a packet of information located in our foyer. And if you didn't grab one on your way in, you can definitely grab one on your way out. There's a card in the middle that we'd like you to fill out and give to Pastor Bredo. Um, once again, welcome everybody. Just a few announcements today before we continue on. The, uh, the Gospel Bracelet Ministry has an opportunity to work with a mission team in Guatemala. So we are in need of people to help make gospel bracelets um, in their own homes. And if you have any questions, you can see Michelle Feathers with that. Now you can make them at your own pace. There's no, uh, there's no uh, really deadline here. Michelle will give you more information and give you the materials for that. So see her if you're interested in doing that. Um, it's that time of year again uh, for our Faith Bible Church Men's Golf League. That's going to be starting um, next month at the end of May, the, the last Tuesday in May, the 25th. Um, if anybody is interested in doing that, please see me uh, after church. I'll get a sign-up sheet for you next week into the, on the back table. That's going to be a 10-week league uh, here in Russia, so Southern Meadows uh, Golf Club. This Saturday, a couple events going on on Saturday the 17th. First one is going to be for our Trail Blazers. It is a hiking group that meets on Saturdays. They're, this week they're going to be at Black Creek Park from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., weather permitted, permitting. Um, anybody can go to that from uh, 30 and up. And if you have any questions, please talk to Jeannie Curran about that. That's this Saturday at Black Creek Park. Also this Saturday is our Young Adults Night for uh, ages 18 to 30. It's gonna be at Paul and Jemlin Eschner's home starting at 6.30 p.m. And if you have any questions about that, young adults, you can talk to Tom or Kate Bredo. That is this Saturday. Um, on Saturday, April 24th, I'm going to have an introductory meeting, an overview for anybody interested in our lawn ministry. Uh, it's that time of year as well when the grass is starting to grow and we're going to have to start getting it cut. Uh, we had a good number last year that uh, volunteered and we were on a rotation uh, throughout the summer and into the fall. So on Saturday, April 24th, here at church at 10 a.m., we're just going to have an introduction day uh, to go over the equipment and some of the things uh, that we do every week in the yard here. Then uh, lastly, I have a flyer here. This is for the Compass Care Annual Walk for Life. That's going to be on Saturday, May 1st at 9 a.m. at the Highland Bowl Park. Um, there is not, no sign-up for it, uh, but there are a bunch of these flyers on the back table. So if you're back there in the fellowship room today, please grab one, give you a little more information on it. Um, you can talk to Evan and Alicia Mandola about that for more info. So that's all the announcements I have. Ushers, if you would come forward, we are going to receive our offering. And uh, while they're coming forward... I will just say good morning to those out in our parking lot, good morning to those out in our fireplace room. I will be back there shortly to grab any tithe envelopes uh, that you may have. I'm going to ask Noble Coletti to pray for our offering. All right, let's pray. Uh, dear Holy Father, I pray that you bless this service today. I pray that whatever you, uh, whatever pastor has uh, brought to us uh, this morning, I pray that the uh, that each one of us will be able to take it and apply it to our lives this weekend. And I pray that you bless this uh, offering, bless the gift and the giver. And I pray this on, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Sounded good this morning, guys. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Dave and Tom, thank you for the special. Appreciate that. So, I'm just pretending to have coffee in here. I don't drink coffee. And you're not supposed to bring it in here. You know that, right? So, anyway, we have some more of these uh, cups, mugs, uh, whatever they call them. I forget. I forget what they call them. So, what? Tumbler. 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 <laughs> All right, so if you didn't get one, they, they, uh, my understanding is they uh, are for hot or cold drinks. They keep everything uh, very, uh, you know, with the temperature you want them. So uh, they're in my office on your way out. Just make it easy on There's a bunch on my table in my office. When you leave, you can take one if you would like it, okay? So um, we've had some great things going on. I just want to fill you in on a couple before we get into... Uh, I'm going to have a testimony here in a minute, a uh, commercial for Ladies Bible Study, but get into a few things. Uh, we will be in Psalms 27 this morning. Um, so last Sunday was a great Sunday. Um, and then, you know, you kind of, it's, there are a couple, uh, a couple Sundays a year that are like, you know, the Super Bowl, uh, anniversary picnic kind of a thing, Resurrection Sunday. And you can kind of gauge where really, not everybody's here every week. But on that day, for the most part, most of the people are going to be here. And so we had as great attendance as we had and have had in a long time, you know, since everything goes up. We had 270 people in, in church, which was a blessing. Um, and then this, this was incredible to me. Uh, Thursday night, we'll get 130, 140 uh, we set a record Thursday night. We had 178 people in church Thursday night, which blows me away because I didn't even announce that I was doing Revelation Overview. You know what I mean? So, um, but anyway, we had 94 adults and 84 um, minors, if you will, you know, 18 and under. So that was, I, I just blows me away, blows me away. So uh, your giving has been off the charts. We have a, I have a trustee meeting this Thursday evening after church quarterly review. I'll, I'll give you some information next Sunday, uh, but the giving has been off the charts. So you give the money, I will spend it. All right. <laughs> so here's what's happening. <laughs> and remember, we're, we're completely out of debt. Praise the Lord. Um, this week we are supposed to get a 400 plus feet of white vinyl fencing from past the garage this way to past the dumpster that way. All right. That's just going to make things look really sharp. All right. And cover up the ugly neighbor's fence. All right. So we have that coming. Um, we have, if you were here Thursday night, you would notice this. We have new um, lights in the parking lot. All of the heads have been changed to LED they brightened up the kid. The, the teens went outside to play wiffle ball, and it was like playing under the lights. So it was a blessed, an added blessing. Uh, we're working on, um, get, we've got some proposals to get a uh, backlit, LED backlit cross to put on the face of the red building out here, the gym that faces this way. Okay, so you'd be able to see that, you know, uh, far away. And then the playground is getting delivered Tuesday. Okay, uh, it's scheduled to be here Tuesday. So we'll see, hopefully that'll, that'll go well. So that's, those are some, and those are some, you know, bigger ticket uh, items as well. So, all right, uh, some things to keep in mind, Dave, again, uh, I didn't listen to you. <laughs> Did you mention the youth rally yet? Not yet. Okay, so I'm gonna mention that. Uh, upcoming events, youth rally is gonna be Friday, May 21st, Saturday, May 22nd, all right, 21st and 22nd. We have a, uh, we do traditionally, except for last year, we'll have Memorial Day weekend on the Saturday. We have an all wide church cleaning day where we inside, outside, do all sorts of work. So that's Saturday the 29th. Um, if you're, if you're around, love to have you. We'll have a cookout, do some things like that. Um, and so those are just some things coming up and then everything else that Dave mentioned, I think he covered it pretty well. I did listen. And, um, anyway, so we, we, um, we're able to meet and greet. I, I've never seen the church so happy collectively. That, that, was, that, that was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise. You know, if you were to judge things by uh, our fellowship hall after church, you'll realize people don't mind meeting and greeting. Okay. 
If you do mind, perfectly understandable, and you're seated. Don't bother people if they're seated. Just don't, you know, it's understandable, okay? So we pushed the rows back. We pushed the seats back, uh, eliminating pretty much uh, the section of folding chairs that we have back here, trying to encourage people to sit in the brown uh, chairs. Uh, as, so anyway, unless they have needs, I don't, I'm not opposed to people sitting on the benches. I just would rather you didn't if you don't have to. So anyway, with that said, just a lot of good things happening around here. Um, Attendance in uh, March was uh, was as high as we've had, maybe the second highest month monthly average we've ever had in the history of our church at like 235. So um, anyway, it was uh, it was good. It was a great March, probably record might have even been record giving. I don't know, but um, it was it was just a great month. So we're at, we have a good, we're in a good place. We have some good momentum. Keep that in prayer. Uh, you know that God shows us some continues to show us his mercy uh, as well. He's been very good to us throughout this uh, this past year. All right, I'm gonna ask Alicia Amendola to come up. She's going to promote the upcoming Ladies Bible Study. And I've asked her to give a little commercial of what's gonna be happening here. Um, coming up soon, all right, go ahead, Alicia. Good morning. Um, so we are very excited to be having our first ladies event in a while uh, next uh, Tuesday, April 20th. It's going to start at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Amy has a delicious dinner planned for us. We're going to have a, uh, a short charge um, from the Bible as well as a testimony from one of our nurses over at Compass Care that would be very uplifting and encouraging and uh, dessert as well after. So all ladies are welcome of any ages, teenage girls included, you girls are all welcome. And um, we just want it to be a great time of fellowship, encouragement, and just um, gathering together as sisters in Christ. If you uh, know, a, if you have a friend that also would be really encouraged, feel free to invite them as well. And the sign up, if you haven't signed up yet, is in the back. All right. All right, very good, thank you. I appreciate that, Alicia. I wanted you to, um, I wanted you to see a face with the leadership that we'll have. Um, since we, since we uh, began the church in 2013, and this has been our philosophy, and I've told you this before, we don't really start a full-time, full-blown ministry unless I feel we have the right people in place to do that. So. With, with the ladies Bible study, we've done some, we've had some excellent teachings. We've had a, a from time to time, we've had a study. And uh, it wasn't until I felt that we, we had somebody here that I know, that I know, have known, would know uh, what their philosophy of ministry is, what their doctrinal background is, uh, that they're committed to, not attendance, but the ministry, committed to ministry is a difference in that. And so um, when Evan and Alicia let me know that they were on board here and were going to be staying, um, we knew in talking with them that Alicia was the right person for this. So we're excited to relaunch that. And ladies, there'll be a survey given where you can, you're going to be asked, I mean, what nights would you like to have it at? Probably something like that, nights and frequency and topics or whatever. So. Um, Alicia, again, I like to brag on her. Uh, I met her when she was two years old, my wife and I. Our first ministry was in the two-year-old nursery. And, uh, and I remember meeting your mom one day, Alicia. I don't think I've ever told you this story, but I remember meeting your mom, and, and we worked there once a month, maybe. By the way, it was a different day. 30 years ago, all right? I, I, I don't particularly want men in the nurseries or, the, you know what I mean, that kind of thing, but uh, it was a different day. We, were two, we did it together, it was our first, we got to meet people, and, uh, and I said to her mom, uh, you know, I said, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Bob Brado, and she goes, Does it, did they call you Bobby? I said, yeah, she goes, Alicia comes home and says, Bobby. Bobby, I said, yeah, that's me, you know, so anyway, we hit it off ever since, um, she, uh, when I was the Bible Institute director at North Star Bible Institute, she, she was a full-time student there, she graduated uh, in 2010, and is that correct, I, I got you in 2010, 
and that she was the first student that I had implemented a Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies uh, for ladies to be able to get a bachelor's degree, and she was the first person to successfully uh, complete that. So she has a Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies. It's a big deal to me to have Evan and Alicia. Uh, I did their wedding as well. Um, so it's a blessing, and I'm encouraged, and I'm excited, and therefore I feel now peace about launching um, a ladies' ministry. And so that's what we're going to do, and we'll see. And people vote with their feet, so we'll see what happens. Right now we have 36 ladies signed up for the dinner, so that's a good sign. Anyway, Psalms 27. Psalms 27 this morning. Last week we looked at verse number one, and we preached that according to the resurrection. So we'll read that. I'm going to read here the first six verses. And it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Father, thank you for this morning again. Um, thank you for um, the, the, the wonderful music and the hard work that's gone into that and the, the sound and the lights on and the heat on and the, uh, the fans are on. Lord, uh, we can do a lot of things here for all the things we talked about coming up this week. For the nursery workers and the children's workers today, and for the people who prepared food in the back, just all the things that come together, for the greeters and ushers and money counters, and, and just thank you, Lord. And right now, we just pray your blessing, your hand be upon uh, your word as we bring a message now in Jesus' name. Amen. So last time we looked at the Lord, uh, David said, being my light, my salvation, with no need to fear. Talked about that, no need to fear. He's the strength of our life. And next, David, with that thought, continues in discussing those whom he's not going to be afraid of. He says, whom, whom shall I fear or whom shall I be afraid? And then he lists enemies and foes and all that. And he, people who essentially, God is not their strength, and God is not their light, and God is not their salvation. And he calls them enemies uh, or foes. Uh, now, no one desires to have enemies. I certainly don't. I don't like to have enemies. But I've learned that life will throw them at you. They're going to come. You're going to have, to some degree or another, you're going to have opposition. You're, you're going to have uh, enemies. Nobody likes that. I think about our, our law enforcement officers. And I think about days gone by, and I think about how they were really reverenced and respected and uh, were public servants. And it was just, it was a different day probably when, when I grew up and all that. And, you know, uh, they really didn't want to have enemies the way that they do today. They weren't really looking for that. And they still have to do their job and yet they still have to do it going, I know there's a lot of opposition politically, people who've been outspoken against them, people who want to defund them, people that they work for have really become on the other side of them. And I thought about this for the Christian. Same thing. We've got a job to do in this world. We've got to bring the gospel. We've got to love people. We've got to pray for and serve and be friends with as many as we can. But there's enemies. We would be silly not to think that there are enemies out there against Christianity. 
And I think this is what David is warning about uh, in this passage. Um, I think we need to know our boundaries with the wicked. With the wicked. The wicked are his enemies. Now, what we do know is that Satan is wicked and Satan is our adversary. We also know that he is the God of this world and the prince of the power of the air, kind of controls the environment. Uh, there's a spirit, the Bible calls it, that there's a spirit of the world. What that means, the spirit of the world, you're supposed to kind of figure out what the spirit of the world is. It's like the environment, the culture, this temperature. You're, you need to know what the spirit of the world is saying, because that's not our spirit, okay? What is the spirit of the world all about? The, 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 the culture, the temperature out there. And we also need to know this, that friendship of the world is enmity with God. James tells us that very clearly. Friendship of the world is, you know, that, that's the enemy of the Lord. Because the world is run, the world is run by a wicked being, and therefore, the world is wicked. Do you follow that? Does that make, doesn't that make sense? The world is wicked. Uh, when David says the wicked are his enemies, we would do well to identify who the wicked are. They're not our friends. The wicked are not our friends. What we do need to find also while we're at it, it are friends who love Jesus. I'll make it as simple as I can for you. Find friends who love the Lord. Amen. Those are the friends you want. They love Jesus. <laughs> You don't need to have friends in high places, influential people. Yeah, it's nice once in a while and all that. But, you know, it's just better to have friends who love the Lord. That's what I've found over the years. Friends who love the Lord. Uh, they're the best ones. Uh, an enemy is someone who wants to oppress you, not help you. They stand against you and what you believe. They're not for you and what you believe. Sometimes we want to play nice with the opposition who hold a different worldview, and I understand the logic in that at times, as I, as I mentioned before. But if, as we've seen probably of most recent times, uh, the last probably four or five years especially, uh, we found that the wicked are the enemies of the believer. And everything is geared toward the believer. Uh, they may... They may seem nice or pleasant, but a lot of times they're venomous toward the things of the Lord. And I, and, and I put that kind of to a test. Like, does this person really like me? What do they think of me? Uh, how are they toward the things of the Lord? You know, they're my friend. I have a lot of friends on Facebook, right? They're my friends, okay? But when I put up, if I put up a picture of my family, man, everybody comes out of the woodwork and they like it and they love it and they this and they that. I put up a Bible verse. Those are my friends. <laughs> you know, uh, or say something. I, I put up something. I put up a post. I told you about this, about what the Equality Act, were it, were it to pass the Senate, what it means for churches. I said, this is, I put up a, a post that says, this is what it means for us, society, and churches specifically. And there's a lot of crazy things, I told you. I mean, we'd be forced to, um, you know, we'd be forced to have our restrooms available to all genders, okay? Whichever one they wanted to use. This is what the Equality Act would do, okay? So it crosses the lines and the spirits. Were, and that's not even the worst of it, all right? It's hiring practices for Christian schools, for churches. It's, high, it's all that. There's a lot there, um, and I remember putting some up, in fact, this is what it does. I think I reposted something. Uh, I can't remember, but it, 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 were, it was factual. And I added to it and said, tell me we're not being forced to do this. And so one of my friends uh, took a venomous shot at religion. And how religion, your religion forces this. Your religion forces that. Yeah, your religion is against women. You're, and I, I simply said, first off, religion should never force anyone to do anything. Religion can't force anybody, right? Uh, and I said, second, I don't have religion. I have a relationship with Jesus. I don't have a religion. I don't have a religion, okay? But what that did was told me shots were fired 
and that the wicked are not my friends. Now, you don't have to hate them. You don't have to spend a lot of time on them. Understand they're not your friends. Understand the boundaries. If you want to study the world, this is very simple. You want to study what Jesus thinks of the world? Do a, uh, do, do a Bible program search for the, the world. The world. In the book of John alone, it's in 17 out of 21 chapters. The world. It's in chapter 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 17, 18, and 21. It says a lot about the world from God's perspective. And we know that Jesus came to the world. The Bible says he came to the world. The Bible says he shined light in the world. It tells us it did not comprehend him. The world did not comprehend him. The world did not receive him. They rejected him. Uh, we know that he loved the world. He gave himself for the world. He says, I'm not come to condemn the world, but they end up condemning themselves because they love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. It's all right there. You know what? You know who did receive? John 1, 12 says, the world didn't receive him, but as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That's the believer. So the world, you got to remember that. Je Jesus put it this way, John 15, 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. That's from Jesus. So we can't be surprised if the wicked are not our friends. And if you find the world hates you, it's because they love their own, and that's a good thing. That means you're not their own. You've been taken out of the world, right? But be careful if they love you. <laughs> be careful if the world loves you. A believer is not of the world and will not be embraced by the world when it comes to their Christian beliefs. David says this. David said that his enemies came to eat up my flesh. They came to eat him up. They surrounded him. Now listen, by the way, you may know this, uh, the world, they eat their own. They asked Harvey uh, Weinstein, Weinstein, Winehead, whatever his name is. <laughs> Ask him if the world eats their own. Ask Bill Cosby how that's going in jail. They'll eat their own, man. They'll spit them up, chew them up, spit them out. What do you think they're going to do? David says they're going to eat, they're going to eat up my flesh. They says they're going to eat, they're going to eat, they're going to eat alive. If I, you know, I'm surrounded by them. So don't be surprised if they do that to you. Once you take a Christian stand, they gang up on you because because they're not your friend. Give them the gospel. Pray for them. I'm not telling you to fight them. Pray for them. Be kind to them. Show them the love of Christ. All those things. But you've got to understand the wicked are not our friends. They're not. They're not. Why do I say that? Why, what, what, what is it? Because you need to know this. Listen, you, you go off to college, you need to know that. You need to go. When you go in your classroom, I, listen, you can't be so innocent and ignorant going into a college classroom when they start uh, eating away at the foundations of your faith. Because that's what they do. Criticizing the Bible. Telling you about what, you know, uh, you know, I, I think I want to be a, a civil engineer. You need a psychology course. What? See, they chip away at it. You need to understand that. You don't understand when you go into the workforce that they're not our friends. Wherever you get informed, I get my news from this source. I get informed by this source. I like this person. I like that person. Listen, unless they're a believer, they're not your friends. Filter everything with that. Filter everything with that. Doesn't mean you need to misbehave. 
Doesn't mean you need to be a jerk. Doesn't mean you need to hate people. Doesn't mean any of that, right? You, but you need to be a Christian. You need to be a Christian. The wicked though, David says here, the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up to eat up my flesh. I need to know they're not my, they're not my friends. Secondly, in verse uh, number three, I, this is what I see. When, when he says this, he says, though they, a host encamps against me, my heart should not fear. The war is rising against me, and this will I be confident. The wicked are not to be respected. We do not have to respect the wicked. David says they encamped around me and the war was on and he said his heart would not fear. Because when you fear someone, when you fear someone or something, do you realize you've got an element of respect for them? You fear them. Their presence alone might intimidate you. You know, I, I, remember, um, I remember watching Tiger Woods golf when he when he was in his prime and it was like, wow, they haven't seen this in some time a player like this. But I, I remember watching those tournaments and I, I didn't really like his personality and so I would always root against him. And, uh, but, but I also had respect, like this guy's great. He's not good, he's like great. He's great. And um, in golf, you don't play defense. But his opponents would choke every time they were close in a score with him because he was such an intimidating force because he was so good. It was like, what, what was that? They feared him. You know why? They respected him. They respected his play. They feared him. And that would, that, that would tournament after tournament, that would happen. If Michael Jordan uh, stepped on the court, man, it was like, oh no, it's Michael Jordan. You know, they would have this respect and they would fear him. They would fear him. That, and, and that's, you know, that's the athletic analogy. But when it comes to the wicked, uh, understand. I want you to understand this. I don't care how outspoken they are. I don't care how intimidating they seem to you. Please understand. They are very shallow and very troubled. You don't have to respect that. Very shallow, very troubled. There's no need to fear them. They don't deserve our respect. They've not earned it, and they're not worthy of it. David had confidence when he was surrounded. He was outnumbered, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter that he was outnumbered. Now, you might feel outnumbered when you're in school. I don't know. You might feel outnumbered. There's no other Christians, or they don't want to love. I serve the Lord. They don't want to serve the Lord. It's not popular to serve the Lord. Maybe you feel outnumbered there. Maybe you feel outnumbered in the workplace. I don't know. Maybe in your family you feel outnumbered. David was outnumbered, but he says, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to fear these guys. They don't deserve that kind of respect. I think, you know, Jesus Christ teaches us this. There's a principle here. He said, I'm, I've come to cause divisions. What does that mean? come to cause divisions? You know what that means? That means he's going to flush out who his real followers are. And a household will be divided. Believer in the same household. Believer, non-believer. Why? It's flushing it out. Who's the true believer? I, I truly, I, I truly believe part of part of what the church has gone through this last year, the church, uh, in the American church, I really believe part of it was, let me see, let me see who the real believers are. I you got people going, why well, still watch online? Look, number one, number one, it was never. Church was never designed for that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Never. Right. Now, my apologies to you all watching online. You probably have a good reason. 
I'm talking about the people who are like, I'm just going to stay home and watch it. Because you know what? You're not watching it anymore. You're doing your laundry, you're having your breakfast, you're doing, you know. It's not, you're not a tenant like when it first started. It's just not the same. Uh, polls have shown that, statistics show that, all that. Um, who's coming back to church? You don't think God's paying attention to that? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, yourselves together as a manner of some is? When you're outnumbered, it didn't matter. Dave was outnumbered, it didn't matter. Numbers don't mean someone deserves respect. God always uses a minority. He always uses a remnant. His way is narrow and few there be that find it. We can start there. His ways are not popular, they are mocked. It's harder to do the less popular thing and live right. But this is what deserves to be respected. This is what deserves to be feared. When somebody takes that path of serving the Lord and it's not popular, it's difficult. When you know, our, our young ladies are so wonderful and, and there's a purity about them, um, I'm glad that's the norm here, Dave. Good job, parents. You don't have anything to answer for, girls. You're pure. That's the way it's supposed to be. That should be what's respected. That's what I respect. I don't care what the majority is doing. That doesn't matter. I know what God says to do. It's harder. It's less popular. But it sure deserves to be respected and feared. You know, when God, in Genesis chapter 4, God told Cain and Abel to bring forth an offering to him. Genesis 4, uh, the Bible says in verse 4, Abel came, he brought the firstlings of the flock and of the fat thereof. It says, the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The Lord had respect. Good job, Abel, I respect that. That wasn't easy to do. You've given up your firstling. It's a blood sacrifice. Great. Then it says, Cain... But to Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord just said to him, Cain, if you do well, if, if thou doest well, shall so not be accepted? You be accepted. It's your choice. You didn't do well in bringing me the offering. So does God respect the wicked? No. God does not respect the wicked. He respected Abel's offering, but not Cain's. And the Bible says one was a righteous person, Abel, the other a wicked, Cain. First John 3, 12 says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Wherefore slew he him? Because of his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. God doesn't respect the evil and wicked. And nor should we. How do we know if someone's wicked? Well, you, eventually you'll be able to tell by their works, their comments, their philosophy. Are their works righteous or evil? Or do they line up biblically or not biblically? We are surrounded by wicked. Folks, let's just call it for what it is. I watch the news. I watch a movie. I listen to politicians. I watch some sports. But I'm not dumb. We're surrounded by the wicked. Here's what happens. The media, I, I, I watch it partly because I'm like, let's watch the narrative. Let's see what the going thing is. They lie. Amen. You can pick, you can see it. That's a lie. In the news, the newscast, that's a lie. They lie to your, to your face. But they're the media. You know, they're wicked. They have an agenda. They lie. Hollywood uh, has wicked movies and TV shows. They lie. The government, in the name of public service, <laughs> isn't that great? In the name of public service, they lie to us so they can have their own way. They give us money so they can have their own way without resistance. Professional sports leagues, unfortunately, and this doesn't mean every player, 
But unfortunately, they have an agenda. Uh, you know, the, the MLB All-Star Game, which was silliness. That's a wicked agenda. That's all that is. It's a wicked agenda. More and more. I don't respect that. They've not earned my respect. We need to be careful, I guess, with these things. Who we, who we respect. I just told you, I pay attention to some of that stuff. Uh, far less than I ever have. Far less. I'm getting to where I hate professional sports. That's, that's sad, but that's where I'm getting to. They lie. They're wicked. You know what? I'm careful now. Uh, I used to wear players' names on the back of my jersey, their jersey. Who are they, though? Listen, I, this is Bill's country. Who is Josh Allen? I don't know the answer to that. Who is Josh Allen when you wear his jersey around? Is he, just, is he the, he's the Bill's quarterback? But is he? Who is he? I think, think of one star athlete. I won't call him out because I don't want to. I'm not looking to call anybody out. I, one star athlete is, is, is going to marry a Hollywood actress who said this. I fall in love with human beings based on who they are, not on what sex they are. And this popular athlete is going to marry this girl. And I'm like, I see so many of those jerseys. What are we doing? Who are we respecting? And I understand, you say, I respect them on the ball field. Yep, I get it. I get it. You know what I love? This is what I love. A hundred of you wanted Faith Bible Church sweatshirts. A hundred of you. I love that. I love that. And we gave them to you gladly. You know what? Because you respect it and we respect you. That's why. You're going to advertise for us. I respect you for that. You respect the name, the label, the brand, right? That's how it ought to be. The wicked are not to be respected. Have confidence in your convictions. Uh, respect the word of God. God's ways are to be feared. God's ways are to be reverenced. God's ways are to be respected. When you live them and you're opposite the wicked, you can be confident. This is what I want you to take away. You can be confident in what you believe. David says that they're surrounded me, but my heart's not going to fear. Their war is against me, but in this will I be confident. When we go out into the spiritual warfare, it's a battle out there. We were talking this morning, uh, Mark and Tom and myself were talking this morning about, we don't realize the battle we're in. There's a crazy warfare around us. Listen, next time you get a chance to go take a vision tour of Compass Care, you got to do it. You're, it'll open your eyes to what this is all about. What's happening out there? Wickedness. Wickedness. An agenda that's affecting the world. So instead of fearing our opponent, let's be confident in our side. Be confident in what you believe in the God you serve. I don't think we should be arrogant, but we take a back seat to no one. Christian, you're not a back seat to anybody. Confident. Confident in Jesus. I'm confident in what I believe. I'm confident in what I live. What I live when I live by the Christian principles. Those are the people I respect. Those are the ones I have a godly fear towards. The wicked are not to be respected. They're not our friends, and they are not to be respected because they are not to be feared. You need to understand that. You need to understand that. Lastly is this. I want you to understand that David teaches us here in verse number six. The wicked are not on the same level as we are. They're not on our level. In verse 6, he says, Now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. His head is lifted up. When you see in verse 4 that David's desire is to seek the Lord, you have to ask, do the wicked have that desire? No, we're not on the same level. They don't have that desire. 
Their desire is not to seek God or please God. It's actually quite the opposite. They want money. They want power. They want authority. They want control. They want fame. They want corruption. We're not on that level. We're above that level. God is quite the opposite. Listen, even when you look at political ideology today, just a simple, and I know this doesn't have to be like Christian, but you look at the political ideology, you can see how opposite a liberal is from a conservative. You can just see how opposite they are. They're so far apart on their agendas, aren't they? They always talk about, well, we got to have bipartisanship. We're going to be bipartisan. We're going to cross over the other. No, you're not. Be quiet. You're not. It doesn't happen that way. Because they're different. They have different agendas. They have a different ideology. You know what? They're not on the same level as one another. They're just not. They have a different perspective. And many times it becomes a, a good versus evil platform. The wicked used, used this to advance their evil agenda. Uh, the conservatives try to advance their, I'll just call it, less evil agenda. You know? Um, I know we don't need politics. Politics needs us, and, but it's got to be on our term. We don't need to compromise with them. I mean, I want to live in a, a better world. Don't get me wrong. Righteousness exalted the nation. I mean, I want it to be as righteous as possible. But we're not on the same level. They don't see each other on the same level. They have different, the wicked have a different level. Uh, the, the, the wicked have different places they like to be. David wants to dwell in the house of the Lord. David wants to inquire in God's temple. David wants to hide in his pavilion. David wants to be in the secret of his tabernacle. David wants to be set upon a rock, we're told. The wicked don't want any of that. You think the wicked are here this morning? I don't think so. Well, maybe some of you. I don't know. <laughs> They're not on our level. They're not on our playing field. We have a different platform than they do. We have a different vantage point. Man, I'm thankful that God lifts up our head, sets us upon the rock, gives us a different view. It's a different level David has in verse 6. His head is lifted up above. It says, now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. It's a better vantage point so he can see what's going on. He can watch what they're up to. It's called wisdom and discernment. If you're down with uh, the wicked, if you're at the wicked level, you know, you're, you're at their level you know, and you just kind of, I, I'm not calling you guys wicked. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just, you know, we're just at the same level, you know, you know, and sometimes, you know, we're like, you know, like this, no, no, great, man, this is just the way it is, this is great, this is wonderful. Well, listen, if God lifts up our head, puts us up above, we have a different vantage point, right? We can see things better. We can see things clearer. So, you know, he lifts us up. Now, if, if the wicked is out there and, I, and, the, and, and the, the godly people, God's people are up here, he's lifted up my head, I can see a lot better, can I? I have a better vantage point. I think I've told this story, but it's worth repeating. In 2013, Cameron and I, big baseball fans, our team went to the World Series. I said, what a special treat this will be for him if we could go to the World Series. I'm looking for tickets. I'm like, honey, can we refinance the house so I can <laughs> take Cameron to the World Series? And so the only thing we could do is get standing room tickets. And we had done standing room before. So I'm like, I know the standing room, you could you just stand the whole game. So we went and we drove out there. We didn't get a hotel because you couldn't get a hotel. We drove out to Boston. We went to the game, and man, it was the lights and the cameras and the trucks and the surroundings and the look, look at the logo painted. The World Series logo was on the field, and we were right down there and having a great time. And then it was time to go to our standing room post that we went to. And so it was like it wasn't elevated. It was like on ground level, on floor level. So we were like this. People were seated like you are which was great until everybody stood up. I can't go any higher. <laughs> Most certainly, and I never will. You know, you know so 
<laughs> and Cameron was a little bit better. He's like, yeah, hey, Dad, that's a double off the wall. <laughs> Thanks, son. <laughs> Can I stand on your shoulders? <laughs> hey, what are they doing now? How much did we pay for these seats? I got talk to talking to the guy, and I thought to myself, this is going to be the worst memory this kid's ever going to have. This stinks. A couple of things went by. I had befriended this guy. We were chatting. He disappeared. He comes back. He goes, I found some seats for you and your boy. Stranger. I met him then. I just met him. The only thing we had in common was we hated the Yankees. That was the only thing we had. <laughs> and uh, so he, uh, so we go over to the right field bleachers. I mean, these, I, I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you how much these seats would have cost. And there we were for the most of the game, just in time to see a home run right past our to right field passes. And I remember my son said, after we were driving home, I said, let's pray. He prayed. He said, Lord, this was the best night of my life. And at the time it was. Shannon, it's not anymore. But, uh, the time it was. Happy, happy two year anniversary this week, by the way. Um, you know what it was? Vantage point. Vantage point. I couldn't see. We got up, we had those seats. They were they're elevated. I was like, ah, oh, we can see. We can see everything. We can see everything. Um, this is the vantage point God gives us. You're down with the wicked. You can't see. You can't really see. You're immersed in it. You can't really see it. Oh, this is the common. This is what everybody's doing. They say we should do this and that. Everybody's doing it. Ask God, lift up my head. Set me on the rock. Lift up my head so I can see. So when I am surrounded by it, Lord, lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Oh, he'll give you a good vantage point. He'll give you a good vantage point. It's called wisdom and discernment. The believer should always be wiser and more discerning than their enemies. It's a different level that we're on. Use spiritual discernment today. So much needed today. Spiritual discernment. God offers the believer a completely different vantage point. He offers us a completely different level of discernment. Sadly, though, a lot of believers will not take advantage of it. They'll still take a secular worldview. I want to share this scripture with you. Uh, in Malachi chapter 4, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4 tells us about the coming of the Lord Jesus. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in His wings. It calls Him the S-U, capital S-U-N, Son of Righteousness. He arises with healing in His wings in chapter number 4. In fact, there's a couple other good, nice little hints in chapter 4. It says uh, that He's going to send... Uh, there's, it speaks of it speaks of Moses. The last two people, last three people mentioned in the Old Testament are Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Remember who was on the Mount of Transfiguration? Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. You know the witnesses of Revelation chapter eleven before the coming uh, of the Lord? Moses and Elijah. And then comes Jesus in chapter eleven. It's all laid out right there. But prior to that, in chapter 3, so this is before the coming of the Lord, right? Prior to that, in chapter 3, Malachi 3.16, it just says, uh, I'm just going to read some of the verses. It says, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For them, here's the book of remembrance. Here's who's in it. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Verse 18 of Malachi 3. Then shall ye return and discern, discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. All laid out right there. What's important before we get to the return of the Lord? Find out who's on his team. Find out who can discern, who can discern between the righteous and the wicked. Not who is the righteous and the wicked. Who can discern between the righteous and the wicked. Who can discern today? There's a lot of wickedness today. You better be able to discern it. You discern the righteous and the wicked. We already know you're the righteous. 
But in your behavior, you need to discern, you need to understand. God's got a book of remembrance. Uh, who feared me? Who thought on my name? Who discerned between righteous and the wicked? Who discerned between him that served God and him that didn't serve God? He's taken notes of all of this before chapter 4 when he arises with healing in his wings. Isn't that something? God wants us to know he's keeping notes of all of that, the discernment of different. He gives us a different level of a discernment to discern the righteous and the wicked. What that comes down to is your maturity and your growth in God's word. That's really what it comes down to. What tool do we have? What has God given us to discern between the righteous and the wicked? There's just one tool he's given us. The Bible says this. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. The Bible is likened to milk, and the Bible is likened to meat. We all start with milk. We're babies in Christ, right? Because it tells us in Hebrews, uh, for he's a baby. He's a baby. Everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. He's a babe. Oh, I'm a babe. Could you feed me? Yeah. You know, and all this stuff spit up, and whatever it is, right? But here's the point you're a baby, you got the milk. That's good to a degree. But then it says this but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We get the milk. We grow with the milk. And then we say, I'd like some, I'd like some food to chew on now. You know, for a while I'm drinking, drink a shake for breakfast and a shake for lunch and a small meal for dinner. I did that for like a week. <laughs> By the time I got to dinner, I'm like, give me that piece of meat, you know. <laughs> well, it's only supposed to be the palm of your hand size, you know. Just give it to me. <laughs> I like to chew my food. You know what? You start to eat more getting nourished, strong meat. You become full age. We're not supposed to go back to the bottle feeding. We're supposed to arrive at full age. And the way you do that is not just the knowledge, but by reason of use, you exercise your spiritual senses. Listen. I hope the message helps you today. I don't know that it will. Sometimes they do. Maybe sometimes they don't. But if it does, if it does help you, I hope you use it. Because it's by reason of use that you have your senses exercised. And when your senses are exercised, you discern between good and evil. Once you do that in a repetition, you know what? It's like it, the ministry. Repetition, ministry, philosophy. There's this, there's that. People will come to me often. Hey, what about this? Generally, I'll have a pretty quick answer. Here's why we will, here's why we won't. You know what that is? Just senses exercised over the year. That's all. It's discernment. Here's why we don't, here's why we do. It's experience. It's the same thing when in your spiritual walk with the Lord. Here's why we don't, here's why we do, here's why we should. Here's why we shouldn't. My senses are exercised in the meat to discern good and evil. It's the, the un, we, we are to be skillful in what's called the word of righteousness. It's not called the word of wickedness. It's called the word of righteousness. 
to discern both good and evil. You got to stop. At some point, we have to stop being a baby. Your head is lifted up at a different level than the wicked. It's at a different level. We need to become knowledgeable and skillful in the word. Exercise those senses to discern between good and evil. Friend and enemy. Somebody to respect, somebody not to respect. The wicked aren't on our level. Discernment. Senses exercised. You know when people want to do things? Uh, maybe, they want, maybe they want to begin a ministry. Maybe they want to be involved in a ministry. Maybe they want to be, um, you, know, you know where I start? One, you've been, I see you on a regular basis. You're involved. People know who you are, right? The other is, you've either been or are willing to be a disciple. Why? It's more exercise of senses and spiritual discernment. I have, why I have no reservations uh, about Alicia leading a ladies' ministry? Why? I've watched her grow her whole life. I've watched her senses be exercised. She has a good man to lead her. She has a great family. She has, she's been disciple. She's gone beyond that. She knows her stuff. Uh, she can discern between good and evil. That means a lot. That goes a long way. That goes a long way. It'll go a long way for us. Here's the point, though. What's the point, folks? You say, well, I'm not there yet. It doesn't matter. You gotta get there. You have got to get off the floor. You have got to get off the standing room only tickets. You've got to get elevated. You need to ask God today, Lord, lift up my head above the wicked. Lift me up, Lord. Lift me up. Give me a better vantage point. You've got to have a desire to do that. If you have a desire to do that, you will start with milk. You will work your way up to me. You will exercise what you've learned. You will discern between good and evil. And you will have the advantage over the wicked. You know why? They're not on our level. Stop playing on their level. They're not on our level. God didn't design it that way. The wicked are not our friends. They are not. They, they are of the world and we are not. The world is run by the wicked one. They'll try to eat you up. They're not your friends. They're not to be respected. There's no need to fear them. Number and popularity don't, they don't mean anything. That doesn't mean respect. That doesn't mean righteousness. The wicked are not our friends. They are not to be respected. And they certainly are not on our level. Your head is lifted above them. Now, get up. Get set on that rock and start to discern. Start to discern better. You're better. Well, I'm just going to tell you this. If you're worldly, if you're amongst the wicked, if you're not discerning, if you're a baby on milk, I'm just going to tell you that you're better than that. Amen. You've been designed to be better than that. Let me help you with that. Let me help you with that. You ever been discipled? You ever had to sit with somebody, go through our 18 doctrinal lessons? You ever have your, your sword sharpened? You ever learn the doctrine of the Word of God more and more? You ever do anything up above and beyond? Have you plateaued? I know it all. I know it all. Are you still, are you exercising your senses? I love getting, I get texts from different men, different people. Man, I was reading this today. I, I love that. You know what they're doing? Exercising their senses. It encourages me. It sharpens my sword. I love that stuff. I love it. Because we have to stay up. You say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm above, I'm uplifted, I'm above, my head's been lifted up over the enemies. I, I hear what you're saying, preacher, I get you. Then don't go back to the milk. Keep chewing the meat. Keep chewing the meat. Lord, thank you, Father, for this day, for the message, for your word, for the psalm. Lord, for the boundaries that you've drawn for us when it comes to the wicked. I pray that we just would not cross over those boundaries, Lord. I pray that we would keep the right boundaries. And, uh, Lord, that you would help us uh, in our daily walks to be lifted up above, to have better discernment between good and evil. 
to know, to check our friends, know where our friends are supposed to be, Lord, and know who to fear and to respect. And we thank you for these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Grab your songbook and stand. Let's turn to number 25. Have thine own way, Lord. Number 25. Have thine own way. Thank you.